Hey Booksters, it's Morgan, and in today's video I'm going to be doing a review on the book From Blood and Ash, which is a six book series. Currently, I think the sixth book comes out in February. I think it's February 20th, and it is by Jennifer L. Armentrout. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly. But I just finished the first book. I'm going on the second book, so this will just be um, a review of my thoughts of the first book. Um, first thing is, it is a crazy, crazy long book. Um, I'll have to look at how many hours it is because I listen to it on Audible as well as reading it on Kindle. And I wanna say it was like 20 hours of reading. Let's see. Yeah, it's a crazy, crazy long book. So just FYI to have that in your mind. Um, and that was even, because usually when I read Kindle, I'll read it at like 1.2, sometimes 1.5, depending on how the storyline goes. But yeah, okay, <laughs> on Audible, it's 19 hours and 47 minutes which is crazy. So I didn't get the physical book, so I'm not sure exactly how many pages it is, but I would imagine probably around a thousand, which is good because it means there's a lot of details, a lot of world building, a lot of character building, but just so you know, before you get into this whole uh, universe, <laughs> that it is quite long. So from what I understand, there are three books with the main character, Poppy, and then there are three books that are on a prequel, which, um, I think is like a thousand years before Poppy is born and just give some background more into the Ascended and things like that. So now let's discuss From Blood and Ash and my thoughts on it. So the first thing that I thought of starting the series was that I really, really loved Poppy's gift because she has this gift of being able to take away people's pain and like to to be able to feel what they're feeling and I thought that was just such an incredible gift and I thought it was really well written um, and when she would like feel people's pain and how she said that there was like physical pain that felt like this and then there was like a, a mental pain that felt darker and deeper and I just thought that was really beautifully written so when I saw that I was like dang this should be like a superhero um, power because I just feel like it's an amazing one to have um, something initially that I thought was a little bit eh was when Poppy's pretending to be another girl and kisses Hawk and then, you know, they start making out and stuff, but like that gave me non-consensual vibes, so I didn't like that because I was like, ew, ick, like if this were reversed, I feel like people would be upset about it, so didn't love that, but I did like Hawk's character. In the Audible, he's like British. <laughs> So I, I think that's funny, but I, I really enjoyed his character and um, his transition into Castile I thought was really great. Um, him being Prince Castile, I feel like it made a lot of sense because they were constantly talking about this prince. So for a while I thought like maybe this like prince person is who Hawk has this like deep pain about because I was like, well maybe it's that, like maybe that's you know, his brother, and then you find out that he's Prince Castile. And the whole like ending I thought was really crazy where she like stabs him in the heart and he doesn't die. And she like, is like, she regrets like stabbing him. And then he like comes back alive and like bites her and then realizes she's Atlantean. And it was so like, the book itself is so long, but I feel like there were large periods where it was just kind of like their day and like them running around and having these thoughts. And then it was like the last, like, I don't know, 15, 20%, there was so much that went on that you were just like, ah. <laughs> um, also the Ascended from the beginning, they gave me like the weirdest vibes because everything they did, I was just like, this seems so questionable. And then when we get to that scene where those parents are begging for them not to take their third son, I thought that was like wild. I was like, this is giving sketchy for sure. <laughs> um, and I immediately, when we find out that they're like actually killing the kids and like, you know, using them for like nutrients, <laughs> I was like, yeah, that makes sense. But then later they talk about how they also take the second, uh, the second born um, at like a different time in life, like when they're older. So I was just like, dang, people are really giving up a lot of their kids um, and everyone's just cool with this. So I thought that 
was interesting. I really liked the character Tawny, um, Poppy's, like, I guess sidekick, <laughs> you could say. Uh, she was always super sweet, and initially I was like, is she gonna end up being a bad character? But I just like how throughout it she maintained um, being a good one. So I thought the ending was also, I'm looking at my notes here, I thought the ending was um, crazy because like, I think like the last line or the last few lines, he's like, oh, well, we're gonna get married. Um, and she's like, what? And I think Poppy hates him so much right now because of all the lying. Obviously, like he's pretending to be someone else. Um, so to just like randomly throw that on someone <laughs> and be like, we're getting married. Um, I don't think she's gonna be cool with it. Obviously, I've read into the second book, so I know how she responds, but my initial thought after reading that is like, how are you going to get this girl to agree to marry you? Um, and my thoughts at the time of reading are, it's like, okay, so like the second book's going to be about her falling in love with them, and then probably, I'm not that far into the second book, but probably something like, um, something happens to him, and she like, it's like, oh, I can't live without you, and um, that's how their romance <laughs> expands, but... Yeah, I thought the first book was really good. I gave it a four out of five stars. It was quite long, so there were some periods where I was just like, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but I I thought that it was really great. Um, the writing was really beautiful. The character building was really nice. You really grow to love Poppy, and you kind of understand, like, even when she's initially like, I need to go out and, like, live life, and I've been, like, so caged and stuff, I think that um, made a lot of sense. I just wish that she would have made it a con consensual encounter <laughs> with Hawk. Um, but yeah, so next is the second book, which I'm reading right now, which is Flesh and something. Flesh and Fire, does that sound right? Something like that. And it's pretty good so far. I'm going to also do it on a Kingdom of Flesh and Fire, yeah. I'm also doing it on Audible and Kindle. I think Audible is good for longer books because I feel like after a while, you're just like, okay, <laughs> I need to like get this book going. Otherwise this book's gonna take me weeks and weeks and weeks. And I'm on this kick where I like to read a book a week. So today is like day, maybe day seven of me reading this book. So I'm excited to, um, hurry it up. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so I still have quite a bit to go just because the book is so long. Uh, but I might speed up my, my Kindle reading a little bit. But anyways, if you are interested in reading the book, it is really good if you like to read uh, fantasy romance. There really wasn't a ton of smut in the first book. I would say very light. Um, but it was cute. And I think you do fall in love with Hawk as well. And... Yeah, moving on to the second and third book. I haven't really researched the book series enough to like know how the book progresses. So I always think that's nice when you go into a book and you just have like no expectations. I obviously know that people on BookTok love the book, so I was like, okay, okay. Um, I'm into it after Akatar and Throne of Glass. Like to get into another large series is so nice because you learn so many intricacies of the characters. So I am excited for um, the continuation and I will make a review on uh, a Flesh and Fire when I finish it. So yes, would recommend four out of five stars. The Smut was like one out of five. Um, but I, okay, actually I did hear that some people stop after the second or third book because it gets so smutty, which I think is really funny because there's like no smut in the first book. So like the progression, it's gotta be pretty extreme. So I just like, to me is like, is it gonna be like a gradual buildup or is it just gonna be like no smut, tons of smut? <laughs> uh, so I am interested to see how that happens. But thank you for taking the time to watch this video and I will see you guys in the next one. Make sure you like and subscribe.